Hi, it's Chantelle here from Fiverrific. Welcome to another Tuesday tutorial. As you can probably tell just by listening to this, I am on the tail end of a flu. So I'd like to thank my daughter, Abby, for giving it to me. Thanks, Abs. You're awesome. For this week's Tuesday tutorial, we're going to be making this gorgeous crocheted dragon scales cow. This particular cow, I'll be using the corner to corner or C to C crochet technique with just some slight variations. So it's not very difficult, but I will warn you up front, it is yarn hungry. I made the silver silk cow using 90 grams of Milky Way, which is about 500 yards or 450 meters per 100 grams. And it doesn't make a massive cow, but it's big enough and it's gorgeous. So let's get on. Okay, so to get started, with the cowl, I'm going to be giving you a recipe rather than an actual pattern because I know like everybody else, we're just gonna jump into our stashes and grab whatever yarn we've got, whether it's a four ply, an eight ply, a 10 ply, a worsted, wherever you're from, you'll grab whatever's handy and whatever you like. Now, I personally think this looks better in finer yarns, but it's up to you entirely because it's your project. So the first thing that we need to do is create our first corner square. So if you have a look on the two color, we need to create this corner down here. Okay, so we'll get that started because we work in this angle like this. So we're gonna start here and then go backwards and forwards that way. First thing that we do for this particular pattern is we do a chain. And just like normal corner to corner, we do six chain, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now we count back to the four. So one, two, three, and four, yarn over, insert the hook, draw through one loop, yarn over, draw through two, draw through two. So this is a lot of trebles or double crochets if you're in America. And so we yarn over. Now we're gonna do five trebles into the next stitch. So one, two, three, four, Oops, split that yarn. And one more is five. And then one more into this last little stitch here. So just put that in and I just push the bottom one around. And draw that through. And that is our first corner completed. So row one is done. Now we're on to row two. So we turn our work over and chain six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Count back four, one, two, three, four, and do the same again. And we're just doing the same as we did for our first. So on our increase edges, this is how we increase it every time. Two, three, Four and five. Then one into that last one. Just push the bottom one aside. Okay, now what we do is we into the loops of the first chain. So where we turned around doing the chain into the chain four we do a slip stitch into that gap. Now here, we do chain three, one, two, and three, and then seven trebles into that same chain space. One, two, three, four, six, seven. Okay, so now our row two is complete. We turn that over and we chain six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. 
one, two, three, fourth back because this is how we increase every row and then five into the next chain and then one into the little last hole I just push the bottom away it's the easiest way to get into that one because it's a bit stretched out then we into that first chain gap here slip stitch I tend to pull it just that little bit tighter just because I do want it to be quite firm and I just tend to fold those down in front to get them out of the way one two three whoops it popped up again and then seven into here seven trebles then we catch on over here into that chain loop space slip stitch chain three and then seven trebles into this gap okay so what we have here is we've got three steps one two and three so I like to think of them as steps and I count them at the end of the row before I turn it otherwise you get a wrong count now we just keep continuing on like this until we get the number of steps that we like I personally have for this particular four ply yarn I like 12 steps but you just work it out until your desired width and then I'll show you how to go onto your rectangle so you've gotten your square to the desired width across the base and you don't want it any wider you want one two three four five for this example now we want to make sure that we have enough yarn left over at the end to be able to do the decrease down so our scales are our best friend so just grab some kitchen scales they need to be fairly accurate but not super because you're going to use the same scales tar it to zero weigh your crochet mine says three grams i know for my uh, for my other samples i was coming up closer to sort of 11 or 12 grams so I always leave an extra gram of room as you saw that flashed up to four the scales aren't perfect so leave an extra gram just for safety okay so we know that we want to keep working until we've got four grams of yarn left to use up a whole ball or obviously more if you want to make it shorter so we've got it to our desired width we turn it and instead of chain six we slip stitch across And we slip stitch through all the stitches here and then into that chain loop and then chain three and seven treble and we work across like we have done for all the other rows until we get to the other side now because we do want our item to be rectangular we need one side to keep increasing like normal so we're not actually decreasing down we're not finished we're making the rectangular shape Two, four, six, seven. so in this one in this side we continue along like we did at the beginning we do our chain three and our seven treble and we turn one two three four five so we just double checked before we started we've got one two three four five steps and then one two three four five six chains and just do this like normal so what you want to be doing is joining and slip stitching back on one side and increasing with the six chains on the other side so you'll, you'll be able to tell by looking at each side where you're up to and just keep going with this until you've reached your desired length or until you're at the point in your yarn ball that you have to decrease or you will run out. Okay, so you've worked one, two, three, four, five and you're looking at it thinking, what have I done wrong? But what you need to do is just slip stitch into there and turn because we're actually moving along this way not up and down so don't be confused just flip it just slip stitch it flip it 
and then slip stitch across. It'll get you back into position for your next row. And just keep doing this process of slip stitch one edge and increase the other edge until you get to your desired length. Double checking every now and again that you do have your five steps, two, three, four, five steps, or your desired number of steps. It's very easy to miss one. So just keep an eye on that and keep going until you're ready to start your decrease. So we're going to start our decrease now for this example. So we've done our flip and our turn. Now we need to just do the normal stitches and we're going to flip and turn at this edge as well. So we'll flip and turn both edges until we get to the corner. Slip stitch, chain three. treble seven and we'll do this till we get to the other to the next corner okay we've come up to the last join the last step on we do that chain three then seven trebles we're still going like we would normally go we turn we don't chain six we slip stitch across just like we were doing on the other edge. Now we're going to be slip stitching across on both edges. And we chain three, then uh, seven trebles, and we do this all the way across to the next edge where we slip stitch across. And so now we've got four of our steps. So one, two, three, and four. In our work, we slip stitch across there, stitch that one, stitch that one, join that one, turn it across, you'll eventually have three and two and then one and we'll catch it back up together then okay so i've just joined up this last little corner into there and then what i would do before i cut it off is double check i had five across one two three four five one two three four five so our ends are the same and we have a little rectangle which will mean that we can in theory stitch it together this one's a bit short we won't be stitching this one together and then you just trim it off and bring your end through so using this silver cowl i left a nice long tail uh, when i end it off i should have probably mentioned that before keep a long tail and then what we're going to do is we're going to crochet these edges together let's throw that over there so it's not in the way because this is a because of the style of this, we want to keep it nice and loose. See how our end is not at the end there. I'm actually just going to sneaky just pull it through. Because we're just going to join the corners. So. Okay, so we don't want any sort of tension in it, we just want it there. So draw it through this corner, through, through that corner stitch there. So with our pieces like this, put the corners together, just get that out of your way. And then what you want to do is insert there and into this three chain loop, Draw through the loop, back through, and then chain three. One, two, three. I might make it four on this one. I don't want it tight, I just want it to exist. So I want to insert into this gap here, and into that same gap on the opposite piece, and slip stitch. Then chain four again. And do this all the way across. So into that gap there, that's matching gap at the back. Chain four. In there. And in there. Just make sure you're marrying them up properly. Hate to get to the end and find we haven't done the right thing. I'm just double checking mine because, you know, I've said it now, it's going to happen. We've got lots of dog noise out there. But we're nearly done. Now, depending on your yarn and your fabric, you might want a chain less or a chain more. 
it'll depend on what you're doing but whatever it is you just want to sit snug without pulling tight does that make sense you don't want to create puckering you just want it to be long enough to get from one gap to the next into that one into the last one there chain four and then into this last corner we want this last little edge here along with the last one at the back draw it through a slip knot and draw the tail through I've got to weave in the two tails but that's our seam right there. oops hang on I'll get that out of the way but that's the seam you can barely see it so it looks wonderful you can have it on the inside of the outside it's not going to matter really because it blends right in and that's it I hope you've enjoyed this week's Tuesday tutorial I had a lot of fun coming up with this and I've really enjoyed working on it so please click like if you've liked it click subscribe if you haven't done so already don't forget to hit that little bell icon if you want to make sure you're not missing any of my videos it's time for you to fill your universe with fiber fun off you go I'll see you next time bye